Desmond grows up with his family, which includes his brother Hal, his mother Bertha, and his father Tom, who used to be a soldier. Tom fought in the First World War, and now that he is home has not been the same. The impact the war had on his mind has given him a lot of trauma, which causes him to be angry and drink heavily. This leads to Bertha having to comfort the kids and letting them know that their father doesn't hate them, but hates himself. For the majority of their childhood, Desmond and Hal have fun together, climbing rocks and going on adventures in nature. Sometimes they get into fights, which Tom encourages so that he only has to discipline the winner. Why stop and save me whipping them both? This way I just whip the one that wins. Desmond has typically always been a sweet boy, but one day when trying to defend himself with a brick, he almost kills Hal. Luckily, Hal was okay but the reality of him almost killing someone sticks with him, which is amplified by his religious mother Bertha. Take another man's life, that is the most egregious sin in the world, sir. Fast forward 15 years, Desmond is seen working at his town's church. In the matter of seconds, through the window he sees a man have an accident on the street and rushes to help. Desmond wraps his belt around the man and he gets sent to the hospital. The doctor realizes what Desmond did and praises him for his critical thinking and saving the man's life. Nice work, you might have saved this boy's life. Desmond has a realization. He looks around the room seeing the good work the nurses and doctors do, and really takes in the feeling of helping people. He's always dreamed of being able to save people but never got a formal education. Here is where he meets nurse Dorothy, which makes him weak in the knees. Bro even donated blood on the spot just to talk to her. I would too. The next day, Desmond returns to the hospital to spit some game and ask her out. Their first date was at the movies, which went well even though he almost fumbled by him trying to kiss her without warning. I thought you might have liked it. Well, I might have if you'd ask. Fast forward and the two are seen having a healthy relationship, where Desmond even gets to learn more about medicine from the books she gets for him. Some time later, when they are all home for family dinner, Hal announces that he is enlisting for World War II following his father Tom's footsteps, but decides to tell them after the deed is done because he knew they wouldn't approve. His mother Bertha scolds him for the fact that he is going to kill people which is against her beliefs. Tom also begins to cry and become upset as seeing his son in uniform is triggering his PTSD. Seeing his brother, Desmond decides that he wants to enlist as well, telling Dorothy that he wants to become a medic. To have her not be upset, he asks her to marry him, to which she happily says yes. Desmond goes to talk to Tom, who is at the gravestones of his fellow comrades from war. He explains how he does not want to also bury his sons. The day comes when Desmond is departing to Fort Jackson. Dorothy gives him a Bible inside to keep near his heart, which has a picture of her inside. After arrives at the fort, he is introduced to all of his new boys, including Private Smitty who scares him with his knife. We meet Sergeant Howell, who enters the room and scares all of the privates by coming with no warning. Howell is everything you'd think a sergeant would be. He yells and insults everyone for no reason and criticizes all of their appearances, which Desmond thinks is funny. Are you grinning at me, boy, or is that your natural state? Bro is really testing his limits. Howell immediately takes them to start training. Desmond does very well in the obstacle course due to his upbringing growing up in the mountains. The next drill is rifle training, which sparks a major issue as he refuses to pick up the gun. Howell drags Desmond to Captain Glover's office to explain himself. Desmond elaborates that he should not be needed to use a gun as he is a conscientious objector and should not have even been sent to a rifle company to begin with. He also tries to explain that due to his religion he is not supposed to be working on Saturdays because that's his Sabbath. Glover laughs and thinks the whole ordeal is a joke, and mentions how he would be able to trust Desmond in battle if he cannot follow orders. If you can't do it here, I can't trust you to do it in battle. I'm putting you in for a section 8. Psychiatric discharge. After returning to training Howell puts Desmond on blast in front of the other privates for being an objector saying that nobody can count on him in battle. Later that night, before bed Smitty sneaks up behind Desmond and takes his Bible to instigate a fight, which Desmond doesn't give in to and just asks for his Bible back politely. The next day, Desmond has his psychiatric evaluation where they ask if he is hearing voices, where he explains that he is perfectly aware, but just a strong believer and not crazy. The doctor explains to Captain Glover that Desmond is not crazy and cannot be discharged, which means he is now allowed to work as a combat medic if he continues to do well in the other areas of his training. Glover becomes mad and tells Howell to keep him in the barracks, making him spend time on exhausting labor like cleaning the toilets. Howell also trashes his bunk, telling everyone that they will not be getting a free weekend, forcing them to work and implying that Desmond is to blame. Because of this, at night when Desmond is sleeping he gets beaten up badly by the privates, while Smitty asks him why he is not leaving. In the morning, when Howell comes for line up, he sees Desmond's battered face and seriously recommends for him to quit for his own sake. Desmond says that he will not leave and also does not give Sergeant the names of the guys that beat him. I, I sleep pretty hard. After the unit's training is complete, they are all allowed to go home, except for Desmond, who gets arrested for insubordination. This makes Dorothy nervous as she is seen waiting at the altar, 
and is sure that something must have happened because he would never abandon her. In his cell, Desmond gets overwhelmed from the situation and has a breakdown, but puts on a poker face when Glover comes to see him. Glover wants him to plead guilty so that he will not face any charges and can be released but again, Desmond declines. Dorothy finds out that Desmond is being held and comes to visit him, where he persuades him to stop letting his beliefs come before his safety and to just pass the rifle training which requires no killing. Desmond relentlessly sticks with his gut, and so Dorothy calls Tom and Bertha to share her worries. The next day, Tom shows up at the fort wearing his uniform with all of his old medals, demanding to speak to his former commanding officer, who is now the general. Inside the court, Desmond pleads not guilty, however as he is about to get sentenced, Tom breaks into the court with a letter from the general. This note states that the ability to be an act as a conscientious objector is protected by the US Constitution. This leads to the case getting dismissed to avoid any trouble and finally allows for Desmond to begin training as a combat medic. He is relieved and ecstatic. To celebrate, Desmond and Dorothy get married as planned. Some time passes and the 77th unit is sent to Okinawa, Japan. Upon arrival, the harsh reality of war hits the group as they watch soldiers pass carrying piles of dead bodies like they were nothing. The unit settles in the barracks and are soon joined by the remaining soldiers from the 96th unit and Desmond gets to meet the only two other medics in the area. The soldiers from the 96th unit tell the rest about the Meta Escarpment better known as the Hacksaw Ridge. Americans have tried climbing the ridge over six times but each time are bombarded by the Japanese army. The Japanese tend to target the wounded soldiers, so Desmond is advised to take off the Red Cross on his sleeve to make him less of a target. Here, I got you a new helmet. A few days later, the reinforced unit makes it to Hacksaw Ridge. Reclaiming the ridge is very crucial for them because it means that they will be able to retake Okinawa which means they can take Japan. The battle begins with the US Navy firing missiles over the Japanese army. With the chaos brought from the explosions and smoke, Desmond's unit is able to climb up the ridge and fight. It's blood. We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. Immediately, the battle begins quickly followed by bloodshed. There are a lot of lives lost on both sides, however Desmond keeps his strong resolve and begins carrying his wounded comrades down the ridge. A few times, Desmond was almost caught and killed by Japanese soldiers, but Smitty makes sure to watch his back and take care of them. After a long day of battle, night falls and Desmond's unit decides to dig and camp in the spot they have taken, with the goal of reclaiming the rest of the ridge when the sun comes up. Desmond says that he would like to continue looking for any left survivors, but Howell says that it is too dangerous to leave. Smitty stands up and volunteers to cover him, which Howell allows for, so they make their way. Desmond is able to drag out a few soldiers before they take a break in a hole. For the first time, Smitty pays Desmond respect as he finally sees his heart in battle, and the two of them even joke around like they have been friends forever. Desmond drifts asleep and has a vivid nightmare of the enemy soldiers ambushing them and killing them in the hole, and wakes up in panic. After telling his dream to Smitty, he cracks a joke about a man who doesn't even use a gun in his dreams. Desmond explains where his opposition to guns stems from we see a for abandon him as a baby. Morning soon arrives followed by more chaos on the ridge, the Japanese army launches a counterattack by ambushing the Americans. It is a disaster, Howell orders the unit to fall back and wait for the navy to help, but unfortunately Smitty dies before Desmond could move him to a safer spot. The rest of the American soldiers try to scramble down the ridge, yet Desmond remains. He looks around and hears the cries and screams from his fellow comrades left behind and comes to terms that it is God's wish for him to stay and help them. Desmond quickly begins to start dragging injured soldiers to the edge of the ridge, and uses rope to send them down. In the meantime, Glover who has returned to camp calls off the artillery with the idea to save more lives, but this leaves Desmond, Howell, and the remainder of the unit vulnerable to the Japanese. Desmond still does not give up, even when the Japanese soldiers are getting closer. Desmond notices an injured soldier and buries him under the dirt along with covering himself up with a dead body to avoid being seen. This works and the Japanese soldier walks by, allowing for Desmond to save him after all. After sending him down the ridge, Desmond returns to the battlefield where he is quickly spotted by the enemy. He runs and finds a tunnel which he goes into and sees someone that took his own life. He soon realizes that this is a Japanese tunnel which allows for them to swiftly get around the area which makes him more nervous. As enemy soldiers are passing through the tunnel, he manages to avoid them all but then accidentally stumbles across a wounded enemy soldier. Sticking to the doctor's code, he gives him morphine and a bandage despite being the enemy. Morphine. That's good. Once it is safe for Desmond to leave the tunnel, it is night time again. He does not let the darkness get in his way though and keeps moving to find and evacuate injured soldiers, despite his own hands beginning to bleed and become injured from the grueling task. In the morning, Glover notices that all of the medic bays have been filled and wonders how all the wounded soldiers got there. One of the rescued men claims that the guy nobody believed in has been doing this all alone. Meanwhile, Desmond comes across an injured Howell with another soldier. After carrying out his comrade, Desmond goes back for Howell, but gets seen by an enemy sniper. 
Desmond runs on purpose to make the Japanese sniper shoot, which leads to him exposing his location. Howell takes advantage of this and helps Desmond by killing the enemy. Desmond begins dragging Howell out and Howell fires back at the enemy soldiers to protect them. Once Howell is sent down the ridge, Desmond jumps as well as he saved as many soldiers as he could. The Japanese soldiers peek over the ridge and are quickly finished by Glover and the rest of the unit below. Desmond is picked up by his fellow comrades and is given the highest praise and respect and goes to the medic tents where he learns that the other medic didn't make it. Later, Glover comes to talk with him and apologizes for everything saying that Desmond has done the most for his country. Glover also says that they will be going back to the ridge tomorrow, which is Saturday and tells Desmond that he would love him there but does not need to go as it is his Sabbath. Desmond wants to go and we see the rest of the unit waiting for him to finish prayer before going back up to finish off the Japanese army. We're waiting, sir. Waiting for what? Private Doss to finish praying for us, sir. Now, the Americans take the enemy by surprise and with new knowledge on the tunnels from Desmond, they are able to successfully get an upper hand. A group of enemy soldiers come out of the tunnel waving a flag to surrender but are only pretending to get closer and throw grenades at the soldiers. The Japanese are instantly shot at and killed, but Desmond gets hurt in the process of deflecting a grenade. The other privates put Desmond on a stretcher and begin taking him to the edge of the ridge, only stopping to give him his Bible, which fell during the fight. Despite this, the Americans still win the battle of taking back Hacksaw Ridge and the story ends. The real Desmond Doss carried 75 wounded men to safety on Hacksaw Ridge. He was the first conscientious objector to receive the Medal of Honor, America's highest award for courage under fire. Desmond and Dorothy were married until her death in 1991. Desmond never stopped living true to his beliefs and gave all credit to God. Desmond Doss passed away at the age of 87 in March of 2006. Thanks for watching. I give this movie an 8.7. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this.